Boom. Covey's with us. How are you? I hope you can hear me. I didn't check this microphone, but it should be working. Yeah, you're good. Can you guys hear us out there in in TV land? Oh, let me tell you guys in TV land, uh, by all means, load the comment section up with any uh, questions that you have uh, concerning, you know, what Covey's going to talk to us about. I don't know how well of a public speaker you are, but uh, welcome. I leave the public speaking to my mom usually. So yeah, <clears throat> stop talking stay behind the camera. <laughs> stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the quiet, quiet one in the corner. Yeah. But it's okay. Hey, so uh, uh, <clears throat> how is it that you wound up being an intern at Baker's Green Acres? Walk us through that process. Um, honestly, it was kind of short notice on my part. I think my parents had planned it for a while. Um, and they had talked to you, I know a good amount before they talked to me about it. And then, um, I came down what in May, end of May. And so I think I found out second week of January ish that I was coming or they were planning on coming. Um, right after I think they came and saw you and, uh, they came back and then they told me, um, so it was, I mean, it was a couple months, so it wasn't like immediate, but it was a little bit abrupt. Um, and I was definitely not, I wouldn't say not excited, but I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. We live in the middle of what Raleigh, so the biggest second biggest city in North Carolina other than Charlotte. Yeah. And then to be like, oh, you're gonna spend the summer and on a farm in Michigan. That's it's a little weird. Yeah. But uh it ended up being it ended up being nice. It was fun. And I honestly they told me who I was gonna go see with. I had to look up your YouTube channel and even then I didn't quite remember <clears throat> meeting you because it was so long ago. I think I ended up finding whatever video I recorded from the conference and my mom had to point you out. Not that you're not a memorable face, but Mm. I was too busy, too busy that conference. And I met a lot of people, Yeah, but it ended up, it ended up being fun. So it was a good, it was a good summer. All right. So you showed up uh, Memorial day, wasn't it Memorial day or close to it? Okay. Pretty close. Drove up, drove your forerunner up, and still uh, love that car. What what happened? Tell us about your your experience. Um. Well, the first week, maybe two. I think we know. Well, I guess we should start with the first two days. The first two days was a little complex. I had an interesting first adaptive night. Um, so I got there and I met everybody and, uh, I was, I don't know if how many people have been to the farm, but there's the campgrounds next door to you and you have a little apartment over there. And so I was set up in the apartment, which doesn't have, it did have power, but it didn't have water. And I had lights, which was fine, but it was mainly the water, the water and the, it was summer. So the water and the air conditioning was a big, uh, big difference from what I'm used to. Yeah. And I, I guess it was the hottest week you guys have had in Michigan. What was it like? 80, 82, 83. Yeah. Which is semi-normal here, but for Michigan, at least I heard it was pretty warm. And so it was a little, it was a little interesting driving from, my house in the city to staying in a hotel and uh where'd i stop ann arbor i think on my yeah. way up and then i came up so it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a difference and i definitely had a little bit of a freak out moment after i ended up setting everything up i was fine for a minute i set stuff up in the apartment and i did a little bit of cleaning and whatever and i think you'd stopped by and checked on me and whatever and i was kind of settling in and um, it was pretty late 
like 11 o'clock at night-ish. And I think my parents had called me because it's about the time they go to bed, if not a little bit sooner. Um, and they were just checking in and whatever. And I was talking to them and I definitely had a little bit of a, uh, a, a freak out moment. And I ended up staying that night in an Airbnb. Was it that night or was it the next night? I think it, it was, was the first night. night. It was the next night. So I stayed that night. And then the next night I had talked to him during the day um, after we finished around four. And then I think we ended up booking an Airbnb for a night. <clears throat> and that was a little interesting. Turns out all I needed to do was ask you for a fan or yeah. two, which was, uh, it's a, it's, it's weird mainly because I was by myself. That was the first weird thing. It was the first time leaving home. But also, it was just uncomfortable. Yeah. And so the mixture of the two was not a great combination for my first my first week. I've grown to enjoy it now, actually. Um, and I've gotten used to being home and, I don't know, just not being as worried about little stuff like that, yeah. which is kind of nice. And so, I don't know, it was a good, it was a good, it was a really bad first week in my head which looking yeah. back it was really nice in hindsight but as of my time being there it was a pretty rough first week and um it was i don't know it was just different but i ended up and I, I end up enjoying it now i'm thankful that it happened at least yeah. but it was it was a rough it was a rough first week which yeah. i think was which i think was nice because it also made it feel like my summer up there was slightly separate from being up here. And I think I learned more thinking it was less vacation-y or like a trip down to Michigan to hang out or whatever. And it seemed less vacation-y than it did. Well, it ended up seeming more vacation-y near the end just because I had gotten to know you guys and we were hanging out and whatever. But uh, it the learning process seemed less vacation-y as far as my first weekend up there goes, yeah. which was nice. And it was good for my brain comprehending stuff yeah. and being able to learn stuff. So that was, that was pretty nice. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I knew that you were going to struggle a little bit. I, I knew that. Yeah. I think and that was uh, the plan on your part. Well, I, I could see it. I, I could see that you were struggling, but I thought, he'll get through this because this is uncomfortable, but only for a couple of days and then you get used to it. And then you started to get your nose in a groove and then you were looking out, you know, from just your situation that you're in. And I, there was another situation that was going on. It was uh, the anniversary of your, your sister's death too. So oh, that yeah. Was, that, that was, was also that uh, a burden on you too, as well. Um, and being away from home during that time. But when you, it was like you flipped, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the austere conditions were kind of like secondary to your duties here because you started to see, oh, I can, I can do this. And we um, assigned you things that were your things. You know, you had a responsibility to them. And then you started to interact with the animals too. That that had a lot to and the kids. And you, yeah. you found a place. I'm a big routine person too. So having a routine was pretty nice. At least yeah. a loose, like you know, weekly routine. Day by day stuff happens, you know, which is always fun. But just something to at least have in my mind a picture of how the week was gonna go is pretty nice too. Yeah. And then yeah, obviously hanging out with the kids was uh, a, it's weird when you go to live with a family for the first time and you're just kind of there. And so it's, it's always weird to meet a group of people in general, you know, you work a new job and whatever. It's weird to new, meet new people or you start a new activity or whatever you're meeting new people, but staying at somebody's staying in somebody's house while you haven't met them before is even weirder. Yeah. yeah so that was, sure. that was, that took a minute too. Which I think was weird for everybody, us and the kids, or not us, but me and the kids and you guys too. I'm sure it was an interesting first 
week or two. But after that, it started feeling a little more normal, and then it only got better after that. Yeah. So what kind of uh, activities were, you know, what was your uh, approach to the the duties that you were assigned? You know, how did how did that work on your head? Um, it's a good question. It, they were, it's stuff I'd never done before. And I knew mm -hmm. that you knew I hadn't done it before. And so that was slightly comforting. And I felt better asking questions to somebody that I knew was there to help me. But I also enjoyed that. I like, I like figuring stuff out if I can on yeah. my own it might not be right which i think i'm 50 50 percent of the time I'm, I'm okay but it's it's a pretty big margin of not being right nice. <clears throat> but um i like i still like figuring stuff out and so it was kind of nice because you're not very helicoptery which you don't really have time to be there's a bunch of other stuff happening but um out of only having teaching experience from in school and with your parents and whatever, it's, it's a little bit different. And I think it's nicer. I never, I never liked school for a lot of reasons, but that was one of them. Um, so it was, it was kind of nice. And I don't know, I tackled every problem with a pretty can do attitude. It's also nicer knowing that if, how old's Frank 11, if an 11 year old can do it, I can do yeah. it. So that's, it, it takes a minute to figure it out. And there's a lot of stuff Frank does that I'm still working on, but there is, there's a sort of, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but there's a certain niceness about knowing that if he can do it, I can probably do it too. It's just about yeah. figuring out how to do it. And then once I got in the routine of doing stuff, I, I, I enjoy routines. So that was, that was pretty nice got used to doing things and every week we did a project that was a little bit more challenging until uh about the end and then we pretty much i pretty much gotten in the hang of oh something new is going to pop up this week and i was excited to see what we were doing that week yeah we also started my first weekend there with uh doing uh we did kyle's concrete the first weekend didn't we at his shop i think we yeah went concrete my, my first <laughs> yep. weekend there which was totally new, totally weird. After I'd been there, was it? I think I got there on Monday, right? So I'd been there a full week, maybe Tuesday. So almost a weekend. And we were doing something totally new with big concrete trucks pouring and all that. That was, that was pretty fun. And that's something that is definitely, that's actually really nice to know, just in general. I haven't poured concrete yet while I'm here, but... I think there's a couple of projects in the future lined up planned where I, where I could. And then the chicken tractors that took a, that took a yeah. week. That was a, that was another big project that I did fairly solo. Yeah. And that was fun. I, I enjoy that too. And all the wood working stuff I've used multiple times since I've gotten back. I, we, we moved. And so we sold our house. And so I fixed, I fixed our deck. Um, and that was fun. I meant to send you photos. I don't think I ever did. There's a little chaos between moving and stuff. So I don't think I ever got to, but I read it a little bit of our deck and, um, just sections, you know, that were a little old. We'd had that house for 19 years, so nothing too crazy, but stuff I wouldn't have done before. Mm. And, um, there's projects that I've pictured myself doing. I, I want to build some stuff like bookshelves and stuff for, my room specifically once we finally settle in and move, but that's a different issue. But um, there's definitely projects that I feel ready to tackle, which is, which is nice. Yeah. We did a lot yeah. of moving here actually this year between me and some friends. And uh, so that was, I, I did a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have prepared to do. You carry a Leatherman all the time. I have a Leatherman in my bag with me all the time. Yeah. And a bigger version of that is I keep a toolbox in my car because not everything I do here is at our house per se, but I, I got a toolbox in my car sectioned off like your little boxes wow. to an extent in your, in your shop. Yeah. I got, I'm a big sorter too. So sorting stuff out was nice. And so I got a, 
couple of big toolboxes and stuff working on a little portable shop. So it's, it's been nice. And there's skills. I there's skills and things I know I can do that. I didn't know I could do, or probably knew I could do, but didn't have the confidence in being like, Oh yeah, I can do that. And now I, for the most part, I'm like, Oh yeah, I can help with that. What, yeah. Whatever the task is. So it's been pretty nice. Yeah. I, towards the, well, I, I'd say when you were building the chicken tractor is when you, it seemed like you were settling in. Like, and when I'd say, well, I'll do this. And then I'd just walk away. And then I'd look over and you had your head down and you were jamming, maybe listen to tunes or something. And it were uh, overcoming. And you were, um, you know, that personal, that sense of achievement, you could see it. You could, and we, we were kind of monitoring you at lunchtime. Like, how's he doing? How's he doing? And all of a sudden it was like, ah, he's going to be fine. He's going to be all right. So we yeah, we being able to see stuff you finish too is also nice, which is. is a good thing just in everyday life, but especially in trying something new. Um, I've recently started photography, which honestly, Joe was a little bit of my, my, my kick into that too. Cause I've always liked taking photos and, messing with drones and whatever, but hanging out with Joe a little bit too was fun for that. But um, I started photography and just taking photos and seeing the outcome of those photos is also just fun in general. So seeing stuff you've done completed is nice in a general sense, but especially when you're trying something new and I don't know, building the chicken tractors. And I think by that point I was a week or two into messing with the chickens by myself. Mm -hmm. and stuff so <clears throat> that was pretty yeah. it was a pretty nice moment of just being used to being there and being more familiar with being there and yeah playing music and whatever while i was working and another big transition that i saw was uh, uh i think our audience knows that we have a chicken processing business so every friday we're processing chickens and i think it was you're probably two weeks in helping and and then we had the pastured poultry where we had 20 or so people that came on to um, see how the process works and you became the expert you were you were showing people how to do stuff and you were just you know people were going to you well how do you do this and how do you do this and it was that was pretty neat to watch that happen. That's when I started to see that we have we have something here, you know, that we need to develop. We need to develop this. I'm glad that I'm glad that looked good from the outside because I, I think I blacked out for a lot of that class. I was just kind of working on autopilot, trying not to mess up while people were there. No. It, Which it, it was it, it was nice. It was fun. That was a good class. Yeah. That was my first mostly. time seeing a bunch of people over there too which yeah. is cool. And the class, the class working stuff I'm used to, um, like meeting new people and doing stuff with a bunch of people from yeah. my mom doing her classes and whatever, but also just in general, I like, I'm, I'm pretty good around groups of people, mm -hmm. but especially something I just learned the week before it was, it was nice to be able to put that to use and tell people about that. So, yeah. Well, it, it's not everybody can do that. Not everybody can receive people that are uh, coming to them and say, well, how do you do this? Um, so, I, you know, you could have punched out and just kind of stayed out on the perimeter. You know, don't ask me any questions. I don't know anything. Oh, I'm new here. But you didn't do that. You looked like you were an old hand at it. So that was pretty good. You know, another thing that went really well that I – I look back and I think it was a total success was when we did tribe day, um, you had gone back for a family thing and then showed back up here and then just hit the ground running and uh, just plugged yourself in wherever you needed to be and made that. And, and you wound up in the cafe and yeah. you know, up in there. Yeah, that was a nice trip back home too. It was my grandma's birthday. So we not only, I left for the beach, which is always nice, 
for pretty much a week, four days, five days with uh, all of my family. And I hadn't seen them in forever, but uh, you know, my parents, my sister and whatever. So that was nice to come back to too. And it was a good little reset. And when I came back, it was, it was pretty fun. We met lots of people and yeah. that was, that was a good time. Yeah. Cool. I did end up in the, in the cafe. Yeah. That was, I, I enjoy cooking too. So that was, that was yeah. fun. Let's see, where do we go from there? We, uh, I remember, uh, you and I were driving back from Kyle's. We had poured concrete. We we're coming back and I took a detour and kind of went, on seasonal roads coming home and i said you know what i think you're going to fall in love with this place and and i remember going through this beautiful fields and beautiful woods here in in michigan and uh i think that kind of happened you, you wound up really uh liking it here yeah that was that was nice i think i drove that same path once like through yeah. the thing in my forerunner <clears throat> that was pretty nice and that was fun it's just nice i i also did exploring Ooh, i did exploring on the weekends and yeah. so that was that was fun too got to see michigan and that made it seem a little more uh it made every week seem a little more new if that makes sense yeah it went i think by the other fast, big thing i did it? yeah it, it did. went by so fast by the end it was i didn't realize it was 10 weeks yeah but it's after I came back from my trip, I think the whole the whole month just flew by. I was there for a mm -hmm. month and a month and a few days, and it didn't feel like that at all. I think yeah. it felt like two weeks or so. <clears throat> the other big thing that was new that happened a little bit later uh, was um, uh, moving the cows. That was another another big thing solo at least in the mornings oh yeah that's right from yeah. from the back up that was that was a new thing that took <laughs> a yeah, that's it's right. always you weird would. if you don't if you're not near cows you're near animals that are as big and as heavy as my forerunner that yeah. are just kind of doing their own thing and so yeah. moving them was a little weird well we still and, had the bull then uh, too yeah endeavor i love yeah. endeavor endeavor was always fun used to come up and hang out when we were milking and give us the stank eye yeah i'd send photos actually he was so he was my he was my girlfriend's favorite to get photos of him and ruby i yeah. think were their two favorites so those were the the hits in photos ruby and dawn are my favorite at least until the last week and then faith healed my ankle and so yeah she's got a she's got a soft spot in my heart let's let's talk about your injury that was a milestone too do we have to that was a pretty that was a well, pretty just weird the way injury. it turned out was kind of interesting <laughs> yeah i uh i tripped falling upstairs and turns out i dislocated my ankle which was interesting because it was such a dumb fall but it was a weird weird ankle weird ankle injury i honestly thought i sprained it yeah and so I, I rested on it for, I think I took three days off or something like that before I started trying to hobble around on it again. It was the weekend. So I, I took Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I think. And uh, that yeah. was my try and kind of recovery time, which after I was there was a little hard actually, because I usually don't like sitting around doing stuff or not doing, I don't like sitting around doing nothing. I usually enjoy doing stuff, which being injured and not even really being able to walk around the apartment was a little weird. Um, but at some point I was like, okay, whatever. And so I started hobbling around on it and, uh, it was fine. I think I hobbled around on it for an extra four days or so. Cause I think it was about a week total that it was hurting pretty bad. And, uh, I was milking and face had a little bit of a kicking problem at the time. Yep. And so I've heard it's been corrected since, but it was, uh, she was new to the milking thing, I think, right? It was her first time. So she, she was new out. and yeah, it was a, it was a new thing. <clears throat> and um, I'm not used to being around cows in general, never mind kicking cows. And I, I had, it'd been four days or so with her. And so I'd gotten a little bit used to it, but it was one, one good hit 
hit me on the shoulder, I think. And I kind of hobbled to the side and caught myself on my ankle and I rolled it again, but it, it hurt just as bad as when I, when I dislocated it originally, but after about a minute, the pain went away and, uh, she whacked it, whacked it back into place. And five minutes later, I think I was walking f pretty much fine after yeah. that. It was, it was a little tight for a day or two after that, but for the most part, it was good. That was, that was the highlight of my, my little ending over there. That was, that was a good little last week memento. Well, I'm really glad that you got to milk in the new uh, milk parlor that we, yeah. we built that. You helped yep. build that. That was fun too. That was fun. When I got there, it was still, we still were moving stuff out of it. Yeah. My first week there was me and Jim and we were in there throwing oh, around Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. So you we were still cleaning it out. There was a big, whole bunch of big rocks and whatever. Did you guys ever finish the other side? Not yet. With the concrete no. or not yet? No, no. So, That's, but it was that was good and land that little concrete or yeah, the little concrete bar with Frank was fun. The yeah. whole project was good. That was a, that was a fun project. It's definitely going to be a priority this year. We want to have that yeah. done before we go into next winter. We want to have it completely yeah. done. Yeah, I'm sure that that would help. About yeah. now, we got drain drains to put in, and um, we're going to connect up all the drains from the butcher shop to the milk house so that all of that refuse goes into one tank and then um, apply that tank to the field. Yeah. So I, I don't want to let all those nutrients just go. I want to, you know, all the blood from the chickens and then any milk that we wash down the drain, instead of just letting it sink into the ground, I want to use it out on the fields, but it's going to take some engineering to do that. So, for, for those of you that don't, haven't caught on, Face is one of our cows. And we got her. She didn't have a name. And she got named Stripe Face because she's got a big stripe on her face. And then it just got shortened to Face. And nobody liked that name, but she's still Face. Nobody has a problem with it anymore. She's one of our best cows. She's, she's nice it's, now, too. It's stuck now. Yep. Yep. She doesn't kick. And she uh, she kicked everybody. Um, she got me finally. She got me on the hand, and she just scun off about the size of a half a dollar off of my hand. And I said, "That's it." I was afraid she was going to kick somebody like in the leg or in the shin or something or kneecap. And so I said, "That's it." And so we just left her out. We didn't bring her in to milk her anymore because she was dangerous. And um, one day she came in on her own. She just filed in with the rest of the cows. And I, I was looking at her and something just spoke to me. And I said, maybe we should try milking her from the other side, from the right instead of the left. Because... Some people say you always milk a cow from the right. You know, I think Joel salatin has got that in one of his books. Um, and we always milked all of our cows from the left just because that's how we started doing it. So I tried milking her from the right, and I didn't have a single problem with her. And I sure am glad that we didn't turn her into hamburger because um, she's one of our best cows now. She's really a good girl. And and friendly too. She's actually quite friendly. So, so that well, turned out um, good. So yeah, you wound up taking over the pastured poultry operation by the end of the summer. You were moving the tractors and making sure they had water and feed. And how was that experience? Um, it was interesting to do it. I have seen. Cause I've been to Polyface multiple times. You obviously have a different chicken tractor setup, which I think is nicer. Oh yeah, oh definitely. Um, I I think it's nicer. I had never moved their chicken tractors, but it doesn't look like it's as fun as or easy as moving yours. But um, it was it was interesting to do. I had understood the concept for the most part, um, and so it was a little easier to get in the hang of doing that. Um, but also 
as someone who doesn't work with chickens, chickens are a little, little feisty when it comes to comes to stuff like that, like trying to jump out of the chicken tractor per usual. And they say chickens can't fly, but they get pretty high if they jump. Oh, yeah. And uh, just catching chickens is is an interesting uh, it's an interesting task. I think we got new chicks for the brooder my second week there or something and a couple of them had gotten out and me and rachel went over there <clears throat> and we're trying to catch them and uh ray they're jumping around and rachel's just picking them out of the air and up off the ground and i'm kind of sitting there like hmm and i'm slowly walking up and trying to like nestle this little chicken into my hand because i don't want to hurt the little chicken because i don't want to squeeze too hard but then you're like oh you can kind of just grab the chicken you obviously can't like squeeze the heck out of the chicken, but you know, there it's a, it's a, it's an animal. It's pretty easy to, to grab. And yeah. that was an interesting experience. That was pretty fun too. It's just a little weird, you know, all the flapping and whatever. It takes a minute to get used to, but mm -hmm. after a week or so, I think that was, that was pretty down. And it was yeah. a nice, nice little walk in the morning. Cause it's nice yeah. and it's cool enough to where you're not dying in the heat on the hot days, but it's also pretty cause you walk over the little hill and you can see all the cows and whatever. So it's a nice little setup to there. And it's just a cool morning, morning yeah. routine. It's near the big tree. So sometimes you see the little sun come up the big tree and so on and so forth. It's a good, it's a good morning, morning time activity. And I think that helped a lot being there. Cause I knew in the morning, Oh, I wake up and I do this and then that's what I do in the morning. And then I keep going. Yeah. Oh, I just remembered something. We, it was, it was the week after Tribe that you rolled your ankle. So that weekend, mm -hmm. you were laid up that weekend, and I don't think I don't think I came over to see you until Sunday. Yeah, it was a little bit later. Yeah, and that's because I I assumed it was going to get better because I thought I had just sprained it, and I sprained my my ankle plenty of times before. Mm um and it didn't really feel worse until i started trying to like move around on it and then at that point i think i had uh what did i i think i was gonna go get it checked out i think was yeah. what i wanted to do and then uh i was like well i'll see if you guys can look at it first or i think rachel was like oh miss baker will come down and look at it and yeah she, she gave me it. she gave me that salve which was great i don't remember what was in it It was like pepperminty but it was yeah. whatever that salve was was great <clears throat> and that helped definitely with pain management and whatever um and so yeah that was i think you came a little bit later to check it out that gave me a little bit of reassurance too like yeah. oh somebody at least somebody else looked at it but you know what happened that day um we were it was it started to rain so we sat up here under the uh, the overhang, and there was some people visiting from Chicago. And uh, there was a lady that was camping over at the campground, too. So she was over there at the campground. We thought she was out walking around, and we had, it started to thunder, thunder and lightning really bad. And all of a sudden, we saw a bolt of lightning come down and go into the field out behind the campground. Oh, yeah. Remember that? And I thought, yeah. gee, I hope she wasn't walking around out there. And then it lit the field on fire. So me and Jill jumped in the Jeep and we went too far. And then we had to come back because we couldn't get through the ditch. And uh, me and Jill went out there with shovels and put that fire out. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. There was also that day we went to the we went to the lake. Yeah, and, and just goofed off. All right. Well, uh, I got to tell you this: like, there wasn't anything that I asked you to do that uh, you didn't accomplish. You know, and I think that's why we went to turning over the pastured poultry to you because well, this guy needs a challenge. You know, nothing that we ask him to do, he's getting tripped up on and saying, you know, I just can't. I'm not ready for this. I I can't do this. You know, everything that we asked you to do, you just ate it. You just ate it up. You just, 
went crazy on it. So um, that's a good attribute, and you'll do well in life with that. And I, I think that's what we uh, what we're looking for. That's 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 yeah. what you need in life, right? So, at what point did you think that you wanted to um, come back and? I think you had an idea in your mind to have a few more interns and that maybe you would supervise them. At what point did that become a reality? I want to say, after, after tribe day, after I got yeah. back from my, from my trip. And that, I think that was about the time that I had decided to do that. Um, there are a couple of factors that led me to that decision. Some of them were personal and some of them were just because I liked being up there. Um, I'm doing, trying to do, I was trying to do internships. The plan was to back to back. I was going to do yours last year. And then um, something else uh, this summer, I was supposed to switch up and go somewhere else this summer <clears throat> was the original plan when we had, uh, when my mom had considered coming down, this was before she started convincing you about uh, the intern program or whatever, like before she came down and hung out with you and all that. Mm. And so that was, that was the original plan. And then I was down there and I went up and talked to them. And I think we talked about it while we were on our vacation <clears throat> for my grandma's birthday. Cause we were just catching up cause I hadn't seen them. Yeah. And uh, I think we had talked about me coming up to Michigan again instead of doing something else. Just because I honestly I had a great time coming up there. Um, and the setup of stuff that I wanted to learn was more geared towards stuff I had learned from you than other stuff. Because I was going to do a uh, almost strictly milking uh thing this between winter and summer okay was the internship i was going to go for is mainly livestock based and whatever which is great i just enjoy building stuff more <clears throat> and trying to problem solve that way and um obviously the livestock taking care of thing is a big part of it but you got a lot of infrastructure you're trying to work on i enjoy learning how to build and work on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So at least for my first two summers, I was like, Oh, I can come back for the summer or longer. Or however we wanted to figure that out. And then I was like, well, if I'm coming back, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of people who would want to come also mm. to try and try and learn stuff. And this was mainly because of the people we met during uh, tribe day. Yeah. I think there was a lot of conversation about other people coming up to do internships and whatever. Yeah. And so I figured I'd pitch the idea. I was like, if I'm coming back, why not invite other people? Not a crazy amount of people because you can only do so much for so many people. But, I mean, four of us in total or five of us or whatever I think was our original, my original idea. And I think that ended up working out being our, our game plan. But I think that was the main reason I had thought about it originally and then we had talked it out. And after talking to you about it, I think it sparked a little idea in your head too, but I had thought about it a little bit more afterward and it kind of grew into whatever it is now. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was, that was a good, I, that was a good decision. Yeah. We'll see. We'll give it a shot. See how, yeah. it, how it works out. So um, for the, listening audience uh the the application i think is in the show notes i don't know if i can see the show notes but jill told it's me in the, it's in the description it's in the, the description bottom. okay yeah. all right and now <clears throat> uh tribe people please you know referral on that like <clears throat> don't pass it to somebody that uh that won't do anything with it or that doesn't have a at least a little bit of passion for this type of lifestyle. And uh, we do have water over there now, so, and electricity, but uh, that was a, a method that I used to discipline Covey. If he didn't do what I told him to do, I would shut his water off. 
So that'll. Yeah, I heard you upgraded and Bam. got a kill switch for the power. That's now too. right. If you if you're not a good boy, I'm going to shut the power off and the water off. Double whammy. Yeah, and then if you really get out of line, then then you get trouble. But uh, hey, tell us about your uh, your showering experience. That's that's really interesting because the contrast between your first couple days here, like the conditions were just a little rough for you. But by the end, you were just about drinking out of a hoof print. Where yeah, you were quite the the operator. Yeah, you know? that was that was kind of funny. I think it was different from what you were thinking. I was going to do it in the first place too, which was, I think added a little bit more comedic value to it. But, um, we set up the little, uh, the little hose pocket yeah. spigot. Oh, I can't talk. Sorry. Uh, outside under the little canopy. So it was covered and whatever. Yep. And, uh, so I was like, Oh, I'll go shower over there. But you had set me up with a, uh, did you, there was a, there was a, some wooden platform. platform yeah. I don't remember where I got it from yeah. anymore, but it was, it was in the garage. I don't remember where it was from. Maybe it was in the garage yeah. or whatever, but there was a little wooden platform. And so, I mean, I've showered in public before multiple places, you know, with hoses and whatever. I used to swim. So I, I'm not as, that's not really like a, a crazy, crazy ish thing to me. But a big thing was for me personally, just being here was like, oh, now I got to walk back into the apartment. So I was like, I, gotta, I wanna keep my keep my feet clean, otherwise they're gonna get muddy <laughs> from the bottom. Cause that's just something I'm I'm worried yeah. about. And so I was like, okay. So I put the little wooden wooden platform there and I figured out my my showering angle from that. And then it kind of evolved to it was black hosing. So we had buried it and I'd kind of dug up a little bit of it in a path. So it was still buried enough for you to drive over it, but exposed to the sun. So it warmed up a little bit. So I had about maybe 30, 45 seconds of hot water right when I got there. If I took a shower before five or six o'clock. Hot, hot's hot's excessive. I had 30 or 45 minutes of not freezing cold not water. Freezing. <clears throat> so that was more than enough to do a quick shower. Yeah. And um, and then it just turned into a thing. I I did dishes in there, which Doing dishes in cold water is a little weird yeah. just because stuff doesn't always want to come out. But doing dishes in cold water was, that was, that was, it evolved into my little setup. And then I ended up just setting up that station and I'd gotten pretty used to filling up a, uh, at a hot water kettle, filled that up and threw it in the apartment. That way I just had water so I don't have to keep walking back and forth. And um, I don't know if it's an Indian thing or just a my family thing or whatever, but we mm. always wash our feet or whatever before we go to sleep. It's just a thing. Maybe it's a me thing. Mm. I Maybe it's an Indian thing, but I don't know. But so I had a little bucket dip my for water that way. And it ended up just, it was a good little setup. Mm. It was, it ended up being nice. Yeah. Well, it was kind of intentional because I thought, well, when Covey's uncomfortable, he, will do things to make him and like you like you dragged out that um that platform and i drive past it all the time so i think about that and i thought well that was okay but i could see like a pallet would have been good too like that bigger you know it'd be bigger you wouldn't yeah. fall off of it and you know, i think there was a pallet there too which is funnier i think there's a pallet yeah, a pallet garage. would have been better or, to stand on yeah but Whatever. I got plans for making things even better this year. You know, with four people, we're going to have yeah. to really think about it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be in better shape. I got a black barrel, a black plastic barrel that could be mounted up on top. And then you'd have yeah. as much hot water as you wanted. So long as there's some sunny days, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we had there's there's a lot of ideas. Yeah, a lot of good ideas. We got lots, plenty of ideas. Yep. All right. Well, do you want you got any parting shots then for the uh, our prospective interns? What you think they should hear? Not particularly. I talked about most of them. Okay. 
most of my you're still coming I mean, right I can only yes yeah yeah i'm still coming i can only i can only talk about my experience i can't really give people an expectation because yeah. shouldn't really be expecting anything if you come in unexpecting then nothing will surprise you yeah. and so uh shared my experience and obviously i enjoyed it enough to come back this summer voluntarily so it's yeah it'll be fun right. i don't know I'm, I'm excited i'm excited yeah we are too everybody here is glad you're coming all right yeah i'm excited to see everybody again i miss everybody i appreciate you taking a little time out of your day to come on and, and share some of your experiences with the with the folks <laughs> And uh, of course, if you don't have anything else to say, I guess I'll let you go. And then I'm going to brief these people a little bit and then let them go. Well, it was a pleasure. It was nice to talk to everybody publicly. If I didn't meet you at tribe day already, which I feel like I should have at least met some of you guys, but uh, hopefully we get some applications and it'll be fun and everybody will have a great time and it'll be a fun summer. Yeah, it should be warm this year too. So yeah. I, I, I really think this is going to be our best summer. You know, everyone is a little bit better, but we've got a lot of things on the docket that we want to accomplish. Uh, and it's just, it's nice having people come and sharing their lives with us. Yeah. And there's a little bit of experience too. We've yeah. did it one year. So there's a little bit of familiarity. So it'll be, it'll be nice. Maybe we'll get you started cold plunging. When you're here. We actually bought a cold plunge. So I got, we've been, we got one set up outside. I, I haven't done it yet. We set it up uh, a week ago, maybe two. Yeah. My, my parents have done it. Um, they try and do it every morning. I, I haven't asked recently how consistent they've been going because <laughs> it's been fairly cold here at yeah. night. So they've been doing it. My sister did it. I need to get in there. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. I've been running around a little bit. Oh, yeah, I do it weeks, every day. I, I can't not do yeah. it now. You know, I can't. That's my that's my new. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out. That'll be that'll be fun. You know, uh, Dion and Amy Stumpo. Yes, yeah. I saw they. I it. saw on Facebook. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I saw that today. Actually, I don't check Facebook a lot, but when I do, I get a. Oh come on! I get a good You're on feeds, Facebook so. all the time. I know. I need to check it more. I'm on it mainly for Marketplace now, and then. That's it. So. I check my alerts every once in a while. I just want to see what everybody's doing. That's why they go yeah. on it. <laughs> Keep tabs on people. Yeah. All right, my man. Well, have a great rest of the night. All right. Good night, everybody. Sayonara. And I will talk to you later. Oh, there he goes. All right. That was great. Covey's real trooper. Oh, he's cut right out on us, too, so I can I can talk bad about him now and he won't hear me. He did a good job. Um, I I think the environment was conducive to a young person, and he definitely had challenges. Some of them were in his own head, but he he overcame them, and uh, you know he did really well. Yeah, we were sad to see him go. He really turned into a member of our family really good so that i think that uh the the 2024 intern program uh i've got some ideas that are different than last year that i want to implement i think we want to do a little bit of uh market gardening because i have a a place that's 100 by 100 that if we have people you know they they are coming here to partake in the process so, um, yeah, I want to grow a little bit more vegetables this year. And we've got several construction projects. And what I, the way it's broken down our daily is we have, it's broken down into two, two parts, really. There, you have operations and then you have maintenance and then like research and development, right? So operations is just the stuff you have to do every single day. You got to milk the cows every day. You got to feed the pigs every day. You got to feed the cattle every day. You got to move the cows every day. Um, you got to bed the cows every day. You, you got to take care of the milk every day. Though You got to take care of the chicks every day, moving the chicken tractors every day. 
um, but they have to be fed twice a day. Um, the eggs have to be picked up every day. The chickens have to be watered every day. Let's see what else. Oh, now we got sheep. So that's going to be a level of complexity because we want to use them over at the campground. I can't really have the cows over there because their, their uh, manure is too big. But the sheep, it's just little pellets, little sugar babies. So um, it, when people are walking around over there, it, it's not bad. You know, it's not bad. Once in a while, you'll have a mushy one, but usually they're pretty hard little pellets that just go into the ground. And then we can use them to mow around the bushes that are over there. So uh, that's going to be something that has to be looked at, moving them every single day, make sure they have feed and water. Um, so operations is what we do in the morning. We just get everything done, get the animals taken care of. Actually, they get to eat before we get to eat. And then we come in and eat. And then it's on to special projects. So the special projects, usually that's um, that's like research and development. Like we're going into another area. So like Covey was building a, he built a chicken tractor last year. Did a darn good job on it too. There's a couple of stray holes in that chicken tractor that I'm not sure why you drilled them still this time. But um, no, he did a real good job on that. Got it painted up nice. Did a real nice job. Uh, and then we do maintenance too. So stuff has to be fixed because stuff breaks and maintenance usually falls to me. Uh, research and development is usually like the boys, you know, I'll get them going on projects and then I'm checking in and their carpentry projects or land clearing projects uh we're going to be doing a, a lot of fencing this summer so the interns will get their fill of that and then of course we, on friday we have the chicken processing i'm kind of thinking that they're gonna be i'm gonna i want to cut them loose all at the same time on saturday at noon so we'll be working five days plus four plus four hours on Saturday just to get chores done, you know, the daily, daily stuff. And then Sunday, um, the maintenance slash research and development crew, which is me, will be doing everything on Sunday because they'll be gone. And I'm going to encourage them to, you know, go to the lake, go play mini golf, um, get off the farm, so you come back with a little bit of perspective. And Michigan's a great place, actually, where we are up here. Uh, it's only about an hour and 10 minutes to the lake, Lake Michigan, which is, it's like being at the ocean. I mean, you can actually see the curvature of the earth. Um, and the water is beautiful. There's no sharks in it, no jellyfish, nothing you're going to step on that's going to stick in your foot and kill you. Um, just beautiful, beautiful beaches. Some of them are really um, spart not used, like no one's there. Beautiful places to go. So we'll encourage the interns to leave. And I think they'll form relationships. And, and I think the whole thing will be pretty good. They'll have a little bit of a support group, you know, when they have to deal with me on Monday morning. So looking forward to it. I, I think that the the experiences you have in life uh, stay with you your entire life. So Covey will never forget his first summer here. He will never forget that. And um, I did hear from his folks that he, he kind of liked to be like a MacGyver type guy. And who wouldn't want to be a MacGyver? Uh, what's going to be the age limit? You can't come. You're just too old. No, I think this is designed for uh, people who are starting out or haven't started yet. So I would think, you know, you got to be probably 17 and then probably 25. But I, if it's the right person that, that applies, I, I'm not going to say no, a 30-year-old person can't come. I wouldn't. It's going to be a case by case. You know, we really only have to look at three people. Um, and... 
you know, there's certain things we're looking for and certain things that we're not going to be looking for. Like if you write on your application, he, him, you're out. Don't even think about that. <laughs> Asking for grandkids. Yeah. Yeah, that would not be a bad thing. Uh, if you have children or grandchildren to be able to hook them up with this. Now, this is not a paid position. It's not a paid position. It's about a semester long. And if you did a semester down at uh, uh, MSU, you pay. You pay to be there, you pay for your food, and you pay for your lodging. We're going to put these guys up in some very nice tents. And um, and then we do feed them a little bit, a little bit here and there. Some of the scraps that fall off the table, we let them pick those up. Um, actually, we're going to have a, a new system this time. So they will be eating evening meal over at the campground. So we're going to set up the back of the garage there, the overhang, as an outdoor kitchen. And Covey's going to detail who's cooking tonight and what they're going to have and all that. So everybody will have a chance to do it. Of course, if they want to swap amongst them, that's their business. Uh, I don't want to micromanage any of this. I want them to problem solve, like with Covey. And his his um his shower deal. I got water over there, and I said, "Well, you know, here's the tools, here's all the equipment that I used to hook it up. You can make it better if you want, or you can just shower like this if you want." And he was fine with it the way it was, so we kind of left it that way. Um, the conditions were austere. However, life is austere. It is. Now, he was coming here from North Carolina, living in the city in Raleigh. And everybody there lives pretty good. They all have air conditioning and nice cars and stuff like that. Well, I don't know. I've never been there, but I reckon where he came from, it was, it was pretty, pretty comfortable. And um, I wanted to challenge him with, this sucks. Okay, make it better. Make it better. And you know, he did. Like, he, he was hot in the apartment. So he went and bought an air conditioner. Hey, not bad. That was, you know, you got a problem? Figure it out. Um, I think we're going to do something there, though, because I'd rather just have, like, a fan in the wind. The problem is, is there's only one window in there, so there would be no cross ventilation. So we're going we're gonna to address that. I don't think he'll be staying in there. We're going to get two wall tents and these tents are nice. They're, they're a thousand bucks, but they're, you know, you can walk around in them. There's, um, they're going to be on platforms and then we're going to build an outdoor, uh, latrine, I guess you'd call it. So have a place where you can go to the bathroom and, and then a shower and then uh, a set of sinks so they can get tuned up in the morning before they come to work, brush your teeth and all that stuff. And then we'll put some sinks by the back of the um, the apartment building there so they can cook, you know. And none of this is built. This I all I have to get this done. I think what I'll do is they'll all show up here, right? And I'll say, well, this is where you're staying. Well, uh, Mr. Baker, there's nothing here. And yeah, but that pile of wood right there, that's going to be the platforms. So get your work gloves on because we got to get this done. Well, where do we stay tonight? Oh, you can just you can just sleep in your sleeping bags like outside. It's not that cold. Yeah, this would be great. This would be great. Well, I'm, I'm hot. Oh, you'd be all right. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, when you do move into a tent, you know, and this, the mosquitoes aren't eating you, you'll think, wow, this is nice. Wait, <laughs> there's no water over here. We got to carry it over with a bucket. Yeah, well, we, we'll, we'll run it over for you. We'll, we'll, we'll fix you up. It'll be all right. No, that, that is what you call um, building into people by showing them perspective. You know, 
like when I uh, go back to the Boy Scouts, uh, when we would go to uh, a camp, when we would get there, there was the tents weren't set up, so we had to set them up, and they had latrines in there. Um, so I can't really say that, but we were eating uh, just like cold cut sandwiches and stuff. But then they opened up the chow tent and then the food was a little bit better, you know. And so you don't want to start off with, you know, Trump Tower over there and then they got to come over here and and sweat and all that stuff. You want it to be in perspective. Like I don't have air conditioning in my house. And not at all. Um, and I don't want it in my house. When it's hot, it's hot. That's just the way it is. Deal with it, right? Um, because if you if we do go that route and we put an air conditioner in, okay, well, I guess when do we turn it off? <laughs> so I just don't want to do that. I'm not really into all that. Uh, not that I never was. Uh, I used to think that we wanted to have air conditioning in this house until we did. And I thought, this is crazy. People are going to want to stay inside. Go outside. Sit under a tree. Go in the pool. You know, the pool was a big a big changer. It was a game changer here. Because it does get hot here in the summer. We have probably about two or three weeks that it's really blistering hot. And we're not used to it. So um, you just get worn out. And then you... You want to quit working at like three o'clock in the afternoon. And we would say, that's it. Let's go to the lake. And we would go to Lake Misaki, which is just up the road. It's 10 miles up the road. And uh, by the time we get back, it's still hot. So we put this above ground pool in. We, we put it all in ourselves. And that is a game changer because when it's really hot out and you're just worn out from the heat, so come up here, get in the pool, because we're usually working in shorts anyway, so just get in the pool, and then you just get cooled off, and you go back to work and get a couple more hours in, and, and it's really nice. After dinner, you can go swimming. Before you go to bed, you can go swimming. It's really nice. Um, so there. I'm really looking forward to the uh, the intern program. I, uh, I think it's going to be a... A real fun thing to do and i think that we're going to be able to i like to use the analogy of turning butterflies loose you just get a bunch of people trained up and turn them loose and see what happens and at the end of this whole thing maybe i'll be able to look back and say oh we got that done that done that done that done and then these people that flew away and then they pollinated someplace else i i think we can uh, accomplish a lot by doing this. So if there's anybody out there that wants to help with this project, um, by all means, let me know your intent to want to help. Um, we can use, there's all kinds of resources that we can use because we got to have housing. We got to have a place for them to eat. I got a picnic table over there. So that's done. We got the overhang built. So that's done. Um, but there's all a bunch of little pieces that have to be in. I want to put a gravel pad down so they don't have to get their little feet dirty. I want to put in a foot washing station for Covey. <laughs> Charity says, I don't know if it's an Indian thing. <laughs> That's funny. I wash my feet before I go to bed, but I only take a shower once a year. I don't want to waste precious water. Besides, you don't shower in the wintertime because it cut, it breaks through that protective crust that builds up on you. You don't want to do that. It'll let disease in. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Lots of fun. Clean feet. Yeah. What tribe you with anyway, man? <laughs> uh, us Americans never wash our feet. No, we don't. All right. That was fun. Um, look forward, you tribe people, look forward to uh, a video tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, Wednesday night, is uh, our consulting call. 
that's a Zoom call and you should be getting a notification. If you're not, call the farm and talk to Jill and figure out why you're not getting a notification because it's very easy to come on. And then we have all, all everybody's picture is on there. We have a nice visit. Tribe Plus is my truck, my tribe, says Covington. All right, good. Another successful operation. Really appreciate you guys coming by. And as always, remember, anyone can farm. Good night.